Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Johnson. I'd like to welcome you back to another edition of Studio Talk. Well, I got my Mac Studio Ultra in, and today we're going to start doing some testing. So let's get to it. All right, all right, all right. So, as you've heard, I got my Mac Studio, Mac Ultra in, uh, which is the top of the line, I guess, base model for the Ultra. Four grand out of the pocket, okay? So, it took a while to arrive. I actually ordered it back on, I think, on March 8th, and it arrived a couple of days ago. Um, so, I spent the last couple of days getting everything transferred over, getting it all set up, and doing the testing. For me, the question's going to be, do I keep it or do I return it? Uh, if you don't know, I've already, uh, I have a, another computer. Let me reach over here and grab it. And that is, this is a 16, 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Pro of which I've been using a lot of testing on. Later on, I'll pull up this same session on this particular computer and see how it fares uh, with its processing power. Now, one of the things that I've noticed so far uh, there's a couple of guys out there that I watch quite a lot uh, for tech review. Uh, it's these guys right here. Um, and as you see that video playing, I think it's called Max Tech or something like that. And they do incredible benchmarking and performance uh, measurements on um, electronics, okay? And they're a big Apple um, um, YouTube channel, Apple based. They don't specifically do that or inclusively do that or exclusively do that, but they do a lot of, a lot of other things. So anyway... I've watched all of their videos on all of the Apple Silicon um, releases, whether it's the, uh, the MacBook Air, the original M1 MacBook Pro, whether it be Mac Mini, uh, the iMacs, as well as the M1 uh, Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros uh, that have come out. I've watched all of those videos. Now, one of the things, there's a lot of things talked about in DAW is talking about single core uh, benchmarks. In a second, I'll pull up here and show you um, um, as a matter of fact, let's do this right now. I'm going to put it up right here, here. Nope. Nope. I'm going to put it up over here because it works better for me over here. I'm going to put it up over there. And this is the benchmark that I, a uh, benchmark scores that I got for this particular, um, uh, Mac studio, uh, ultra. Okay. And then now right here are the benchmark scores that I got for my M1 pro MacBook pro. Now you'll notice very quickly that the, um, the what you call it, the um, blah, 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 the multi-core uh, processing obviously is is much, 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 much faster on the Mac Studio Ultra compared to the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. However, there's very, very, very little distinction between the single core performance. Now, as we, as a lot of people talk about, it, it seems like DAWs. Uh, primarily that single core performance is what you do to measure uh, um, uh, performance in a DAW, okay? Uh, so um, I, I kind of say all that to say this. On those uh, Max Tax videos that I alluded to earlier, um, those guys basically came to the conclusion that in their opinion, there's basically for the average person, the not even the average, the majority of people out there, there's really no advantage today of going with the M1 Max, or I'm sorry, the M1 Ultra over the M1 Max. They're recommending foregoing the $4,000 computer that I'm going to be demonstrating for you today and rather go with their $2,000 or at least start there and maybe get the hard drive, the system drive, and the RAM to where you need it to be. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, um, for audio work, RAM is just a non-issue. You don't need to worry about bumping up your RAM to do DAW audio work. Now, when you get into video as well as some virtual instruments and things like that and sample libraries, that starts to change a lot. I personally found in everything that I've done, I've not seen a need for more than 32 gigabyte of memory. Uh, and this one comes with 64 gigabyte of memory. Okay. So keep that in mind too. Now what I've done, okay, in Pro Tools is I've put together, uh, I've got a, a song that I recorded off the internet that I do a lot of my samples on. So I don't have to worry about uh, copyright issues or anything like that. I can freely use it. Now, what you're going to see in Pro Tools here as an example, is not mixed. It's not mixed at all. Okay, so don't don't even pay attention to how badly it sounds. I'm just demonstrating that it can have all of the plugins, and I'll talk about those in a second. Okay, so let's jump over to Pro Tools, and let's take a look at this session. All right, so you can see here I've got a session. 
um, uh, pulled up that I talked about just a second ago. Uh, everything with a lowercase b, obviously the ones in green, those are my buses. So this one here is busing the, the stereo drums, the shaker one and two, and the tambourine. Bass is going straight out. Uh, uh, my bus guitars have my acoustic and my electric. Uh, then I've got a piano going straight out. Then I've got my background vocal uh, bus with my, my main vocal as long as the double. Then I've got an H3000. This particular thing came with, uh, uh, with um, um, uh, printed um, H3000 uh, takes on it. So there's one, two, three, four of those. Those are going to that. And then uh, over here, I've got my uh, background vocal. So all right, this right here, I'm sorry, everything from here to hear that's all um, either reverbs or other special effects, things like that. Over here, I've got my background vocals and you can see all of those there. So how many tracks do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Hey, I can count. I guess school worked out for me. So we got 27 tracks and then we've got what, five buses going on. Now out here also, is we have um, one, two, three, four, five, it looks like. Yeah, five headphone buses going out. Um, each one of those ones uh, for each one of the particular um, uh, style of playing. Uh, and then over here, let's look at the plugins. Now, all these plugins are on every single channel, whether it's a track or whether it's a bus. I just loaded up and I tried to do plugins from various manufacturers. So we start out here with the new Waves, part of Wave Spark program, uh, their subscription bundle. This is their 1176, the bluey version. Uh, hang on, we'll just, uh, we'll kind of keep that up and then we'll see what we've got here. Um, and then we also have the um, virtual mix uh, console from uh, Slate. And within here, ironically, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six plugins within that one plugin, okay? So kind of keep that in mind too. All right, so let's get that out of there. And then let's go over to uh, here. We've got this AMEC thing from uh, Brainworks and Plugin Alliance. And then going down here, we've got this Weiss, um, uh, I'm sorry, no, the drama um, um, compressor uh, from SoftTube. Now, on my mix bus down here, I've got the SSL bus compressor as well as, uh, what do I have here? I think this is from also from Brainworks Plugin Alliance, the Shadow Hills uh, Mastering Compressor, okay? So again, we're not worrying about any of these settings. I've got these plugins. If you notice here, uh, I've got things going on there are settings on every one of the plugins. So uh, all of the plugins in there, including all five of these, or all six of those, as well as the remainder of these other um, other five plugins. So I guess technically, what have you got? Uh, one, two, three, four. You've technically got, I guess, got 10 plugins if you count the total that are in the, uh, the virtual mix rack, okay? So we've got a lot of plugins going on here, and we got a lot of headphone outputs. Now, obviously, I've got more headphone outputs than I need. Uh, because I don't particularly need those on all the buses, but regardless, I did it anyway. So it's kind of a maxed out kind of session here. Uh, in a little while, I'll, I'll actually show you how I overdubbed on that. So let's look at everything in here. Let's go to our playback engine. Here you're going to see I've got, I'm using my uh, Avid Carbon right now, and I'm at a buffer of 32 samples. All right. So now we've kind of got all of that. You'll see my little lightning bolt here. That's for enabling HDX style DSP within the carbon. That's all bypassed. So this is using the carbon as just any other ordinary interface, all right? And um, so that's kind of what we've got going on here. If I go over here to my mix window or my edit window, I'm sorry, you can see all of the tracks lined up there um, uh, and, and you can see how all of that goes. Now, um, if you can see here, let's bring up my um, system usage, and now you can kind of see what's going on. Now, this says 61%. What I found is this is really about as far as I can push it and still be able to come in and overdub if I want to. Again, I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you in a minute. Um, but here you can see this. Once I go into record mode, that would jump up. Now, unfortunately, I just realized when I record, because I actually recorded the recording part before I did this, because uh, I wanted to get that out of the way. I forgot to put that up there. But the bottom line is what you'll see up there. Look, I'm going to reach for the monitors. If you can see me do the monitor, let me do the mouse up here. So, so you see the mouse up there. And what happens is once I hit record on that, that bums out and hits up to about 90. 
So you're going to have to trust that this is really the most I can do at a buffer of 32, okay? So let me put some headphones on so I can listen to this and be able to talk at the same time um, so you can hear me. Let me turn these around, get that cord going the other way if you don't mind. These old beat up headphones, I love them, but man, I've had them for a very, very, very long time, probably over 10 years. Okay, so um, so let me get that over here so we can see what's going on and let's replay. Now, again, 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 I can't, can't say this enough. This is not a mix. These are all just random settings where I'm just turning dials and copying that plugin across all the tracks. So this is, this is going to sound like crap, okay? So ignore that. We're talking about performance, not I wasn't going to take the time to put that many plugins and all that on there and go through all of that to actually get a mix that sounds great. I'm sorry, I, I just don't have that kind of a time uh, to be able to crank out these videos and do everything I need to do. So I'm sorry if that's what you needed, okay? So let's start playing back and see what we've got. Okay, again, so now you can see we've got all the tracks in there and everything else. Um, you know, so again, I'm at a 32 buffer. I'm being able to do all of this really, really no problem whatsoever. It's going to be interesting to see how well this particular session does on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Uh, and we're going to go over to that here in just a second. Um, um, as a matter of fact, let's head over to that. No, no, let's do this first. And then I'll actually pull this session up with the overdubs and everything in over there after I do that. So before we go any further here, let's go over and let me just take a break for a second, get everything set up and record the overdub. So let's go over to the overdub uh, where I can show that you can track in this session and keep it at buffer 32. Let's go over to that right now. Okay, so here I am about ready to record eight tracks uh, at the same time. They're all uh, doing the same input. So it's all the guitar here through Waves Guitar Plugin, uh, their amp sim, just to get a little bit of tonality to that. Um, so all I'm trying to do is just demonstrate that you can record with a 32 buffer um, at any stage um, in this particular uh, fairly dense mix. Although it's not a gazillion tracks, there's a boatload of plugins on this bad boy and a lot of routing going on. So, um, so let's kind of see what that's like. Kind of all I'm trying to do is just demonstrate that you can, in fact, punch in. Um, you know, I could easily do this on a buffer of 128 for me, no problem. I don't really hear any latency when I do that, but I'm going all the way down to 32 for demonstration purposes. Okay, so don't pay attention to what I'm playing. I, I'm just goofing off here. I'm just showing that you can punch it. Now, I have actually done it where I've gone through the entire mix and didn't do anything, no drops, nothing like that. Everything worked great. All right, so let's hit play and record here, and then I'll start coming in at some point. Okay, so you can see what I did there. Um, that clearly demonstrate this. demonstrates this. Again, I could keep going on and on and on. Uh, we'll go back over here. Let's go back to our mix window. Uh, let's turn all of these off of record mode here. And uh, let's take a quick listen back. Okay, there you go. Um, let me put all this away and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, so here we are. We're in my MacBook Pro, M1 MacBook Pro. Let's let's talk about some of the, the specs here. On this particular M1 MacBook Pro, it's 16 gigabyte of RAM. Like I said, that it's M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Now I am in the beta program. Um, um, so for OS X Monterey, um, but that's not causing anything because I've not had any issues whatsoever uh, with this. So I got 16 gigabyte of RAM on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. This is the, the, the base model that you get with that with an upgraded one terabyte hard drive. Um, other than that, it's pretty much stock right out of the gate. Now, I'm going to notice, I'm going to launch Pro Tools here, and you'll see me do that. And this takes its normal time just to get uh, Pro Tools up and going. But what you're going to see 
is it's going to take quite a bit of time um, ultimately to, and this is the most recent version, the 2022.4.0 that just recently came out. Um, And so what you're going to see here is Pro Tools launches just like you would normally expect it to. That said, um, it it takes a long time to load this session. Um, So here we're going to go and say we're going to create, well, let's just open one. From disk, I have this one uh, stored on my, if you see here, I've got it on my desktop drive. Uh, So here we go. And uh, I don't know if it does what I expected to do. Now, I am opening this up um, with a 1024 buffer because I am expecting this to be challenged uh, doing this same session in my uh, M1 MacBook Pro. Uh, But we're going to see how far. But as you can see here, it, it you know it's going to sit there at that bus on percussion for quite some time, and it's going to take a while for this to load up. Um, and so I will be doing. I'll kind of maybe try to keep you a little bit occupied while we're waiting on this. As you're watching this, um, I guess I assume behind me it's happening behind me. I'm on your screen. Um, I will be doing this exact same. Um, 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 uh, demonstration. I'm going to pull every, I'm going to set this exact same session up in Logic, which is M1 Apple Silicon native, um, and and see if we get much of a performance difference there. Is p- potentially Apple's own digital audio workstation potentially um, optimized better for it than maybe uh, Pro Tools would. Now I'm standing here with my hand right here and my shotgun microphone is right there. See right now I'm basically touching the top of it, which means I could have got a little bit closer to me, but I didn't. So anyway, so uh, I probably shouldn't put my hand, uh, maybe I should dog with this hand, my left hand. I don't know. But you can see I'm trying to kill a lot of time here because this thing is taking forever to get going. And you're probably getting sick of kind of listening to me babble on and babble on. So finally, we now got a little bit of movement and it's starting to bring some of the other tracks in. It should start to pick up a little pace. Here in a second. Now you got to keep in mind on this. I've gone on every single track. Uh, I've got five uh, five plugins, really equivalent of ten if you count all the plugins and uh, the, the the plugins that are in with the Slate Virtual Mix Rack. Um, you've got actually ten there uh, if you think about it. And then we also got five headphone mixes. We got I think we got five buses that we're routing to, and of course all of that is on all of these individual tracks and everything. So I'd like to be able to tell you that um, um, that this is going to load really quickly in Pro Tools, but it's not, <laughs> as you can see. And, and, and this also, for the record, this took just as long uh, to load. I guess we'll see once it's done, but it, it seems to be taking the same amount of time that it took on the Mac Studio, which technically should be what... Um, what, four to five, six times faster? I guess that the M1 Max is double the M1 Pro and the M1 Ultra is double the M1 Max. So an M1 Ultra has two Max. So I guess it's, what, five? I don't know. Math is not my strong suit, apparently. But anyway, we're starting to pick up. We're getting through the background vocals right now. But you can tell that this is now going, it's taking a, a, a pretty, pretty, pretty long time to get going. All right. And uh, so we're finally coming up here and hopefully we're going to get a mix window up here in a second. Uh, voila, there we go. All right. So now we've got our uh, system usage happening down here. Um, this is kind of showing it okay, uh, although I'm not sure why I'm getting that 100%. Let, let's uh, let's give this a second to kind of get everything loaded. Uh, you can see I'm pushing the envelope here a little bit. I'm going back and forth into the red. And uh, let's hit play here now. Oh, ran out of CPU processing issues right out of the gate. I guess I should put my headphones on if I want to hear what I'm going to play, right? So let me put those on. All right, so let's see what we've got to do. I'm going to start here and I'm going to take out, um, we're trying to get it to play. So I'm going to take out all of these background vocals for right now. I'm just going to make them um, inactive and then that should free up um, quite a bit. And then I'm going to give that a second to kind of recover. Then I'm going to hit play again to see what I get. Okay. So now I'm getting audio now. Everything seems to be okay. 
but it's probably a little bit close. And so how many tracks did I um, make inactive? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I took eight tracks out. That's like, what, almost a third or a fourth of the total tracks playing here to get that down. So let's say it's a, a third. Uh, so we're seeing a 30% less in performance, but, 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 but this is at 1024. So let's go into our setup here in our playback engine and let's take this down to a 32 sample. Say, okay. Um, and let's give that a second to kind of get processed and ready. I'm going to hit play here in just a second. I am going to expect to have a few issues, um, but let's see, maybe, maybe not. Yep. I've got some issues. So this is not going to play at a 32 buffer. So let's go down here and let's take the rest of these background vocals out and make them inactive. All right. So while this is kind of doing this, what this is demonstrating to me very clearly is this notion that DAWs, that it's only single core processing score that matters, if you remember correctly. And here I'll post it yet again here somewhere up there, left or right. I don't know. I'll post it again, but here is the Mac Studio Geekbench single core results, and here is the M1 Pro um, uh, results. And so, you know, they're they're basically the same for single core. So that's putting a little bump in the road in this theory of single core. However, we are definitely not seeing five times performance. So let's see if we can get playback now. Nope, we still can't get it. Not at a 32 buffer. So let's see how much further we've got to go down. So let's take out all of our reverbs here and everything, and let's make them inactive. Okay, now that we've got that, let's give that a little bit of time to recover. Now, if you've noticed here, um, I'm back down into that 60-some-odd percent CPU usage, which something's going to tell me here in a second I probably will be okay um, uh, with this. So let's see. Well, that makes sound so bad, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry. It's not about that. I'll try not to play it as much. So you can see that. So that's going down just fine. All right. So now that we've got that, let's pull up our, our tracks that we, um, uh, recorded with earlier and let's show and make these active. And I think that's probably going to put a dent back us back in us all over again. All right. I'm not sure here, although this doesn't have as many plugins. Let's see if we can do a playback here. Um, let's go to our transport and let's pull. I uh, can't see here. And let's go all the way back and hit play. That's where that recording was. Okay. Okay, so you can clearly see here where I um, I was able to, or, or those, what's what I recorded over on the Mac Studio, all right? So um, for the sake of this, what I'm going to do for a second is I'm actually going to record over all these parts. I don't need to actually record anything because um, the CPU doesn't know if it's actually recording a signal coming in or just hiss coming from the interface. So I'm going to hit record on all of these and see what I get. Now, this is going to take a second because my carbon... Um, is going to automatically want to add DSP um, so that I can get my HDX style um, no latency tracking. But once I get all of these record enabled, I'll go turn that DSP back off and then we'll be just using the regular interface. And this is the same way that we did it on the, um, the Mac Studio. So <clears throat> I had a second to catch up here. We've got all those on here. Now let's disable these one at a time. I apologize, but I kind of have to do this one at a time. It's not the fastest thing in the world. Um, and then we'll do a recap here in just a second. All right. So here we are. So now we're, uh, we've got eight tracks and record enabled. Uh, let's see how many tracks are we down to now on this? We've got, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so we're down to ten tracks with all of these plugins and these headphone sessions on the M1 MacBook Pro. 
as well as another eight tracks that we're going to record. So that technique is going to be 18 tracks. But keep in mind, I only have the guitar plug-in on the tracks that I'm uh, going to be recording to. Um, so I might as well pull a guitar down and, and, and no, it's not in tune. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to record air. I'd have to go the whole green screen behind me. My actual studio's right back there. You know, my D command is right here, but you can't see any of that. This is hanging from my lighting rigging from the ceiling. Uh, and so that's how I get my green screen around all of this. So I can behind me is the DAW. All right. So a little inside information in case you didn't know it. I'm sure you figured it out already. Um, so anyway, let's, let's hit record here and let's see what we're going to get. Um, uh, boom, boom, boom. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that it's recording right now, although it's just recording his noise floor from the interface. I've still got a mic, uh, a guitar cable plugged into the instrument input on the carbon, so you see that happening. Um, but you can see here, this is going to happen no problem. So, all right. So to recap, here here's my perception. Uh, this notion that single that you can only uh, judge DAWs by single core, at least within Pro Tools, and I don't suspect there'll be any difference whatsoever when I check this out in Logic in another video. Um, but um, that 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 myth uh, seems to be, uh, or at least with Apple Silicon, not to be accurate, or at least historically that feeling. I, I want to be careful to say myth because I really don't know. Um, but I can tell when the rubber hits the road here. Um, if it truly were just single core performance, then I would be able to pull this session up just like I had it in the Mac Studio. Um, uh, even though that's five times more powerful, if it were just single core, this would have been able to handle it. So what am I seeing here? Basically, to wrap this up, we basically had to cut the tracks in half. So we're seeing basically 50%. Uh, the M1 MacBook Pro will perform 50% of the Mac Ultra. Now, if we're comparing that to, um, let's say, um, well, you can only get this on, on the MacBook. So uh, I think I paid $2,800 for this MacBook Pro. Let's take 700 of that off and say that that's, um, um, you know, uh, if we're just looking at the computer. So 2,000 compared to 4,000. So in that situation, going from the M1 MacBook Pro, to the M1 Ultra, yes, am I getting double the performance for double the price? Yes, but is that really what you'd be comparing it to? I wish I had my hands on a um, Mac Studio, just the base model that came out, the M1 Max, because I think that's gonna yield me the exact same performance that I'm getting from the M1 Ultra. And so, um, but there's still a long wait for those. If, if, if I could, I'd just go to the Apple store today and buy one uh, and then give it a try and, if it, and see how that works out because my gut instinct is telling me right now that I'm likely to end up returning uh, this uh, Mac Ultra uh, simply because I'm not seeing the performance being significant enough over the M1 Pro. Um, now, I would think the M1 Max is that perfect little thing. And that matches up with what we talked about earlier in the video from Max Tech, basically the conclusions that they'd came to, that there's really no advantage going with the M1 Ultra over the M1 Max, or at least today. Now, there's a lot of talk about optimization, the next incarnation of the OS X that was introduced uh, this year coming out, I think, either later this year or next year. We're anticipating that as long as the M2 architecture, that's what I think is holding a lot of people back. Um, um, because apparently it's supposed to be a lot easier to port things and make everything and really take full advantage of Apple Silicon once we get to the M2. And then uh, later on, I'm sorry, I just touched the, the shotgun microphone um, in the M2. And then, um, um, you know, later on the optimization of the Ultra chip as well as the Pro and the Max. OK, so they're not fully quite yet optimized yet. Back referring back to the Max Tech videos that I watched, too, there is some throttling that is happening intentionally uh, within uh, certainly the MacBook Pro. So that's an interesting thing. 
So um, you can come to your own conclusions. You can take my opinions uh, for what they're worth. They are simply just opinions. And then we can see where we get, okay? So this, this, this particular video is now coming to an end. So do me a favor. If you like the things I talk about on my channel, hit that. Let me take these headphones off. If you like the things I talk about on my channel, hit that like button, then that subscribe button, that notification bell, so you know when I've got new videos. But if there's any one button that's the most important, it would be that subscribe button. I'd like to continue to grow this channel so I can keep doing these things and help a lot more people out. You know you're always going to get the straight deal from me. This is not a channel where you're going to find me trying to be a mouthpiece of gear manufacturers just trying to advertise their products. I'm not going to do that if I'm talking about a product. I'm going to give you my honest opinion on it, okay? So that's the kind of way this channel works. So anyway, do me a favor. After you hit that like, subscribe, that notification, whatever order you want, just as long as uh, subscribe is at the top of that list. Do me a favor, go back and look at my other videos. i got a lot of videos out there. A lot of them are designed to kind of be timeless, so they're going to be just as relevant today as they were the day I made them. Uh, and then as well as that, I encourage you to please put as many comments down below. I realize this is my first go at this particular one. You're going to have some ideas. Is there something you want me to test and see? Do me a favor, leave that in comments below so that I can do that sooner than later. I know at some point we're going to do a virtual instrument analysis and then see how v virtual instruments compare between the M1 uh, Pro MacBook Pro and the Mac Ultra. We're going to see how that works. And then that's when the, the RAM and everything else is going to come into play. And we'll see how that goes. But that's another video for another day. So until then, hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye.